Hello my lovelies. I hope you've had a really fabulous and slightly spooky week. I recently decided to have a tea party for my girlfriends and seeing as we're in spooky season, I decided to make it thematically appropriate and decided to hold an All Hallows high tea party for some of my favorite people. And I thought it would be fun to share with you what I got up to. I'm making a menu card for the All Hallows Tea Party. So I've just sketched out a rough idea. Here there's a bat, it's a coffin. And then from that, I've just made a, a template, a little bit bigger than that. And then on some watercolor paper, I've drawn that out and just colored the background, painted the background. So I'm just gonna finish this off and then write the menu on here. I really wish I was good at calligraphy, but I'm really not. So we'll see, it will have to do. I've never felt very confident about my drawing and painting abilities. This is because a tutor at university was particularly unkind about my creative work. However, over recent times I've decided that because I enjoy it, regardless of whether I'm any good or not, I'm going to do it anyway because the only person I really need to please in this world is myself. The paints that I'm using are from a watercolour set that belonged to my late mother so it gives me a huge amount of comfort and joy to use these. They're a real treasured item that I have and I enjoy using them very much. I'm just getting better through practicing really and these small projects that you can do fairly quickly are a good way to just have fun and also practice little ideas. Even though I'm really pleased with my menu and my writing's okay, I think it would have looked really amazing if I had used some really lovely calligraphy. I'm thinking quite seriously that this might be my new hobby as I move forward into the new year. It would certainly be very useful in terms of what I do and my creative work and I could use it through my sketchbooks. So I'm on the lookout for some kind of calligraphy course, whether that's a book that I use or some kind of online class or just a class that someone is doing in real life. I have these vintage cotton napkins that I've collected from over the years. They're a little bit stained, really, so I need to go through them. But I've decided that I'm going to embroider on a cobweb onto each to improve their appearance. I've just drawn this on with pencil freehand. You can find lots of cobweb patterns on Pinterest, however, and you could use an erasable dressmaker's pencil or pen if you want to. But because I was going over these using black thread on the sewing machine, I didn't worry too much about using just a normal pencil. So the first thing is to go over the spokes. And I do this by simply sewing along the line and then when I get to the end of the line, pivoting and coming back so that I go over that line twice just to make the cobweb outline look really, really clear. So I think I did about three or four of these cross sort of shapes for the background of the cobweb. And here I am pivoting. So you lift up the foot and turn the piece with the needle down. You can of course do this using free motion embroidery and at some point 
I may show you some free motion embroidery, but this is just a really super simple way of creating quite an effective design in a, a short space of time. And they look really, really good, even though they're very, very simple. Or I think they look really good anyway. Effectively, you are just drawing on your fabric with thread here. So I'm doing the interlinking actual more cobwebby parts of the design here. And I'm just going around and around, pivoting as I get to each spoke. And the line is a little bit angled, so I'm having to guide my fabric quite firmly here. To move up to the next round, once I'd completed the inner one, I just sewed up one of the spokes, as I'm calling them. I don't technically know what part this is of the cobweb. And then sew around and around, and I think each napkin probably took about five minutes. So it was a very quick and satisfying little amount of time spent prettifying my napkins. The menu for my All Hallows High Tea consisted of the Black Widow Cocktail, a Chocolate and Bleeding Heart Gat, uh-oh, the Shrunken Heads of My Once Beloveds with Swamp Dip, Apple Jacks, Snapping Bats with Innards Salsa, and Macarons a la Frankenstein, which are these here. They are not meant to be cracked like this, but I felt that they looked quite thematic and I used icing to do these spiders on each one. I decorated the table using vintage china, a white, black and lilac-y theme, and of course some fake cobweb, everything I either had or bought very, very cheaply in the pound shop. The cake is actually a blackberry and chocolate cake, a recipe I adapted from a Nigella Lawson recipe from her How to Be a Domestic Goddess. The spider on the top was moulded out of fondant icing by my daughter, which was really lovely. And it's the first time I've done piping work, so that was really enjoyable too. There's Ratty, a skeleton rat under the cake waiting to have a nibble. Here are the shrunken heads, which are just baby potatoes and I carved the eyeball, nose and mouth shape out of them and then roasted them in olive oil. And the swamp dip is a guacamole. The table looks really, really lovely by candlelight. I had a bit of an accident with my cake in that I dropped the cake server on the top and ruined the piping, which was a little bit annoying. The Apple Jacks are based on Jack Skellington from A Nightmare Before Christmas, one of the best films ever made. I cooked an apple, a toffee apple sauce, and then just used short cross pastry, cut them out, cooked them in the oven, and here are the macarons a la Frankenstein and the table in that teapot which has got lovely charms all over it is the cocktail and here are the snapping bats so it's a sourdough bread cut out in the shape of bats with the crispy anchovy chili paste that i bought brushed over and just cooked in the oven and these are ray harryhausen inspired cocktail glasses with the black widow which is basically blackberry vodka and sugar syrup with ice and there they are waiting to be poured out. There's a blackberry in each and I've put sugar around the rim of each glass and they are all being guarded by some skeletons there. It's not long now until my friends arrive and I can't wait to spend time with them 
enjoying our high tea and a low-key overseeing the whole thing. I hope you've enjoyed spending time with me today in my little cottage by the sea. I had so much fun planning and preparing for my All Hallows tea party. All the things that I did for my All Hallows high tea party were very simple, quick and cheap to put together. And I hope that if you're having tea parties of your own, that you have found a little bit of inspiration here. If you haven't already subscribed and you would like to spend more time with me in my little cottage, then please feel free to subscribe like share do all of that good stuff it really helps my channel and i really love making these videos for you next week i'll be back with more spooky fun and a sewing video again so keep your eyes peeled for that one and of course there is going to be more vlogtober for you I hope that wherever you are in the world you're keeping safe and well and you're having a wonderful spooky season I shall see you next Thursday for more spooky fun, my lovelies. Bye.